If you've ever wanted to add more dramatic lighting to your own photography, this video is for you. <laughs> All right, so exactly what are these lights? Well, this just came in the mail today. This is the bag from Pro Light Mods, and these things are really cool. Essentially what these are, as I take these out of the bag here, these are covers that you put on your soft boxes, and they turn a boring soft box light into a background light that looks like a stadium light or maybe that maxi brute light that you're all familiar with. Here's a three by three version. This is probably the most similar to what a true Maxi Brute light would look like. I don't own a three by three softbox, so I'm gonna put that off to the side. And then we have a three by four, which is what I have over here. And then this one is a two by three, which is this one here. I'm gonna go ahead and open these up. They're pretty straightforward, but I'll just give you kind of a quick overview. They're basically made out of the same sort of material that you might find with a softbox. There's Velcro all around it. This thing opens up. And in reading the backstory on how these were made, the inventor, James Quantz, he's actually two hours north of where I used to live in Columbia, South Carolina. He was trying to come up with something that he could use on his commercial shoots. He, he does a lot of photo shoots with South Carolina Gamecocks and also with the Charlotte Hornets. And he wanted to create something that would give him like a really dramatic stadium light looking feel without having to build something and carry it. He wanted to be really mobile. So he came up with these. And one of the challenges was he had to find a material where the light wouldn't shine through this, and so he's got that. And then he also wanted to make it to where the circles, when they were pulled tight and taut, would uh, have their rigidity and it'd be able to see like a perfect circle. So that's what he's come up with here. I have to say these are extremely interesting and really cool. And so when you basically get these, I'll have a time lapse here of me building one of these, but you wanna have the shiny side facing in or the logo there's a logo right here, the logo side facing in. And essentially what you're gonna do is just kind of create a little box. And then these fit inside the lip of your softbox. And then when you use the modeling lamp, you can use them as a video prop like I am here. Or when you fire the strobes, I don't know if I have a trigger around here, but you can actually fire these and then they would show up in your background. I wanna mention one thing that's really important and that is that the size of your softbox really matters on how tight and taut these will pull, which will give them the most realistic effect. When James was building these out, he bought dozens of different soft boxes, and maybe there's a video on this alone, but he found out that many soft boxes aren't exactly the dimensions that they advertise. So if you get a two by three soft box, it might be a few inches bigger or smaller on any one of the sides. And of course that can affect how these look. If you look at this soft box right here, this is a Profoto three by four. It's one of their older HR versions, which they don't make anymore. But this softbox is a little bit bigger than the standard three x four. And so I don't know if you can really tell this, it's kind of subtle, but one of the circles or a few of the circles, they're not exactly circular. Now I could of course fix this in post-production or take some gaffer's tape, or I also have these little clips and I could kind of get that perfect. I just kind of threw these in really quickly. The softbox over here is made by Godox, and if you go to Prolight Mod's website, they have a list of the best softboxes that they've tested. This was rated one of the highest, and what's incredible about the Godox lights is that they're like $45, you get a two by three foot softbox, and you get a Bowens speed ring, which normally that would be $40 on its own, so definitely a good value there. I might even recommend just buying new softboxes that are recommended for these modifiers and just keeping everything all together so that if you ever need this effect on set, you could just have two or three soft boxes. They have the modifiers in there. It's all one system. You know everything fits well and you just kind of pack it up and leave it. Or if you're like a senior portrait photographer, you're gonna be using these all the time. You might just have a set that's permanently set up. Let's go ahead now, we'll jump into the photo shoot session. I have found a collegiate pole vaulter. Yes, a pole vaulter. I wanna to try to create a kind of an interesting portrait of her using these lights. So let's go ahead and put these away and get this studio set up and let's knock out a cool photo shoot. All right, here we are in the studio. We got the amazing Gabby here. She's like a talent of all things. Gymnast, runner, pole vaulter, kiteboarder. I'll just stop now. But um, we have our lights basically set up here and I've taken a few quick test shots and the configuration I'm going for is 
I'm trying to make this look like just one big bank of lights. So I have the two by threes, I'm actually using two of them. They have some space between them, but then I'm placing Gabby just in the middle of that space so that your mind doesn't really register that there's two different sets of lights. I'm gonna go ahead and take a test shot here so you guys can see what this looks like. And of course, she is completely black. I've gelled the lights orange so that they have a little bit more of an orange look to them. And we do have some overhead lights that we're using for video, but as you can see here, at 200th of a second, I'm shooting at 4.5 and ISO 160. These lights aren't really adding a whole lot. And some of the lights that you are seeing is actually the flaring of the light behind her. Now, in determining my key light, there's a lot of different things I could do. I've decided to go with a Profoto two foot beauty dish. It's going to be kind of a hard light, but it's also gonna confine the light really close to her body. This room has a lot of white walls and a low ceiling. So if I use too big of a light modifier or it doesn't have the right you know, edge to it, I'm gonna start lighting my background, which I don't wanna do. The whole illusion is that the lights are fading into black and if we light the scene too much, now you're gonna see all of my gravity backdrops and everything. So I'm gonna use this Profoto Beauty Dish. I have this just off to the side and just kind of up above. I'll go ahead and turn this light on. We'll turn on the modeling lamp so you can see that as well. And so now what I need to do is position this directly over Gabby. Let's go ahead and take a shot here. I'm not exactly sure if I'm gonna shoot vertical or horizontal, but Let's do a vertical. I like to always zoom in and look at the eyes and I like to see the catch light in the eye. If this is a little too high, her eyes are gonna be totally black. If it's too low, you're gonna just flatten the light and there's gonna be no shadows. So it's finding this perfect distance where you can just see a little bit of the softbox or beauty dish in her eyes, it gives it that pop. The next thing I wanna do when shooting athletes, you're always trying to make them look really tough and edgy and contrasty. So the next thing that we can do is I'm gonna add some side lights. So for these edge lights, I want them kind of soft. I don't wanna just use bare bulb because again, that's throwing light everywhere. So I'm gonna put it in one of these soft boxes. I also have the grid on it, which helps contain the light only to our subject and not spilling all over. This is the Profoto 1x4. I'm gonna just take one of our B10s, throw it in here. And typically these lights, if you put them too far behind, it's only gonna add the littlest bit of light around the edge. If it's too far in the front, it's now gonna start lighting the whole body. It's almost this fine little space where it's kind of just doing the edges of her arms and her uniform. So somewhere like there is probably pretty good. I'll go ahead and turn on the modeling lamp just so you have some light on the video to look at. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a second one of these just to the other side of her. I'll go ahead and set one of those up. Same exact setup. So now we have, this is a crazy five light setup. We have. One key light, we have two strips acting as edge lights, and then we have our two soft boxes with our two by three mods on them. All of that just to get one single frame. Go ahead and look right here, look real tough. And you can see now, if I zoom into her arms, there's like a warm light coming from the side. I've put gels on these lights as well. And you can see on the right side, just it's the littlest hint. If you go too strong with this, let me go ahead and turn this up a lot. And if we compare this shot, you can see it's just too overpowering on the right side. It's starting to go into her face. So I'm gonna drop this down. If you were shooting something like UFC fighters and you look at those images, it's really strong. It's like almost a highlight that goes all around their face. For something like this, I think I just want it to be a little bit more subtle. All right, Gabby, I want you to kind of face this way. Yep, and then drop, drop the shoulder towards me, just like down a little bit. Yep, right there. Perfect, and then look super badass. And of course, you could always add this in Photoshop, but one of the coolest things about this is you can show people on set the final image, and they get a vibe for what it is. You're, you're actually shooting it on location, so it's not Photoshop trickery. It's not something they can just hire anybody to do. When you show this on set, I think it gives people an excitement that's just not there when you kind of add it and post. We have our shot. These look really good. But I think what would make this look great and what kind of sells this effect is the atmospheric haze. So I know I've been using a lot of smoke machines lately in my work, but this is the perfect environment for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in this little smoke machine. We're gonna add some smoke to the background. And then in a small space like this, once the smoke comes in front of the camera between you and I, 
it starts to make the image look really dull and boring. So we really want the smoke just behind our subject. But in a room like this, inevitably, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go kind of everywhere. So, All right, so we got our final shot here. Now all we got to do is add the smoke. Smoke machine's ready to go. Three, two, one. We'll add a little bit more. Yep, right there, perfect. Give a little smirk like you know what's up. There you go, there you go. And our smoke is now starting to get in front of the lens, so it's starting to lose a little contrast, but it still looks pretty cool. One last little thing, we've added the shoes. We're gonna put a little bit of water spray just to make it look like it's the end of the meat and she's done working out. And look mean, look tough. I think we got it. All right, so I think that's our final image. Look at these, these look pretty cool. <laughs> All done in camera. I mean, of course, we could tweak these a little bit in Photoshop, but I think it looks pretty awesome. All right, so there we go. Pro Light Mod. Super cool. Really excited about these. Go to the links in the description if you want to get your own mod or if you want to pick up any of the soft boxes that fit these things perfectly. If you enjoy this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to our channel below. Our goal for 2022 is to get 1 million subscribers, and we're oh so very, very close. So go ahead and subscribe, hit that bell, and help us out. And if you're really into photography and you want to take your game to the next level, head over to fstoppers.com slash store where you can check out our full-length tutorials. We've teamed up with photographers in all different genres, including landscapes, headshots, swimwear, product photography, macro photography, architectural photography. Basically, any type of genre of photography that you might be interested in, chances are we have a tutorial for you. Stay tuned because we have some really cool content coming up on our channel. I will see you guys really soon.